This is the weekly Griffball Hubcast, only on GriffballHub.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Griffball Hubcast. This is episode 315. I am Sonic Nachos. Joining me is Ugi. How are you tonight? Hey. Or tonight, this morning? Yeah. It's early. I just woke up. It's <laughs> afternoon for me. It <laughs> is for me, too. I still just woke up. Yep. Doing okay, though. Yeah, so... um. First things first, uh, for those of you who are watching this live, and I'm probably going to mention this again towards the end, today is the last day of uh, GGL signups, so if you want to play uh, uh, and if you want to play and get your team in, today is the last day, day for you to do so. There is a front page post, I think mm-hmm. it is the third article down, it's still on the front page, that will, um, every, all the instructions are in there as to how you create your team and whatnot and get yourself signed up. If you have any issues, uh, contact myself or uh, Rage or Ally, and we can make that, and we can get stuff figured out. Worst case, we can just add you directly in through the back end. So, yeah, if you do want to play, make sure you uh, take care of that today because this is your last chance to do so. Signups will close at eleven fifty nine p.m. Eastern time, I believe. Okay. But yeah, uh, other than that, we haven't had too much happen this past week because we are kind of in this off season between the two leagues as uh, BGL signups are open and. Uh, AGLA, obviously, that finished uh, about a week ago, so we're kind of just uh, stuck here in limbo between the two seasons. There was a preseason rush held on Thursday, which uh, it was interesting. We had uh, three teams register for it originally, which wasn't enough to run the Swiss format, so uh, we were going to just do a uh, round robin where every team played every other team twice. And then Tonga decided to split his team into two so that we could make Swiss format work, and we were kind of just stuck with like, okay. So that added a little bit of a delay. So I think in the future when we run rushes like that, like it historically when we run rushes, uh, you have a half an hour of registration and then games start right after that because we never think it's going to take that long mm-hmm. to make the brackets and then it always does. So I think it's probably better to just have half hour registration or like 45 minutes registration and then 15 minutes to get the brackets made and then start the event. Because we did end up starting like I think pretty much right at 9 Eastern. So it was like half an hour late from when games were supposed to start, but... It was like the same time of our normal Thursday stream, so I think in the future we can do that and things would be pretty all right. Uh, why? Let me make sure real quick that we are live. OBS is saying that we're fine, but yeah, Twitch. Uh, on I had dashboard. to refresh the page. Okay. Yep. Yep. I see it. Yeah. Normally on the Twitch, uh, no, the Twitch da- dashboard would normally say like, "Hey, this is you're live." Like I, I'm normally I'm normally able to see a preview there, and it wasn't showing up. It was still showing our offline screen. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Why is that there? But yeah, so we're okay there. But um, yeah, seems like it. So that was a uh, that was an interesting rush that we had going on then. Wednesday, I think we just did Warzone, if I remember right. Warzone and customs. Wednesday, yeah. Because uh, we are again, we're kind of stuck we'll in the between did. seasons. And, and then, we had the tournament part of the tournament shown on Thursday. Yep. It was, I mean, there was only two games happening each round, so it was the majority of it, to be honest. That was also our... Uh, just customs type of thing. For my team, Team Caboose, that was our first foray into actual proper league matches, which was interesting. We've gotten to the point where we can start to beat random teams, because uh, at, at the attending team, when it was just Team Caboose, they uh, they did have some issues against attending teams. There was a sort of attending mixer we had the first night, and mm-hmm. I believe that they scored goals, but they didn't win a game from that. And then, uh, and then I carried them in on Team Pro Caboose to score two goals. <laughs> we didn't win. It was against DJ's team. We didn't win, right. but we got two goals, and I had seventy-two kills. So, yeah. But uh, they, they, we did, we've been doing better. I mean, we I mean we didn't just score a goal in that rush, but it, that was all against like kind of higher tier teams. In matchmaking, yeah. though, we're able to win now. So, my backpack's big enough for that at least. That's a start. <laughs> We're getting there, making progress. But yeah, yesterday we also had a couple of events going on. Obviously, we had our normal Warzone weekend stream, which was uh, it was just myself and Receptor this week. Actually, we had BG join us uh, partway through because she was around, yeah. and uh, she's the team captain of Team Caboose. So uh, we we were we were running through there. Uh, she ended up getting kicked out partway through because AT and T was doing uh, maintenance on some of their internet lines nearby, and that was causing problems. But yeah. Hmm. So that was a good time. Warzone, I mean, Warzone Weekend is usually fun, but yeah, that was definitely a good time. Uh, I did not regret spending my birthday night doing that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> before that, uh, I did not. I was not around for this because I had to leave. Uh, I had to leave to visit family for lunch. But uh, 
I know you were, I believe you were, were you, were you there to watch it or did you just help set it up? The map testing? Yep. I was there for both. Okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought you were there. I couldn't remember, but yeah. Yeah. Garrett has uh, Nightgard had some map testing going on yesterday morning, which mm-hmm. is for the latest matchmaking update. So, from understanding, there You're is there to a show off to Cal and Unishek yep. and a few other people from Forge community and a few other Griff Ballers were there to help him test it out and yeah. make sure that the map worked properly, make sure that the uh, graphics were fine, frame rate was good, yep. and Try the map wasn't it. broken to begin with. So yeah. Yeah, basically going through and try, uh, try to break everything, make sure that it could stand up to matchmaking, make sure that we don't have a red versus Goodness. blue court that kills people off the yeah. spawns half the time. And you did address still that problem fixed. specifically. I had to do some of the scripts, which were broken now, but well, he edited the maps so that they didn't... I remember the map creator said it was fixed. Because in when we were playing it, for the tw- I think it was for the 24-hour Griffall stream before RTX, he was actually the, the map creator was actually in the chat the, for the Twitch stream. And uh, we we were we were playing on the map, and we were talking about how and we were talking about how amazing it was because uh, when we saw him in there, and he's just like, oh, it's too bad it's broken. And we we're like, what? What are you talking about? We haven't had any problems. And we just started playing this on another round as soon as we said that, and then immediately we just die on the spawn as soon as we as soon as we say, yeah. oh, we've never seen any problems with this. Oh, oh, that's what you're talking about. But I thought at the time he yeah, said it has that... to do with uh, the invisible barriers on the map that keeps you in the map. But Knockyard updated the maps so that the invisible barriers are one way. So you can go through one way, but you can't come back out the other way. So yeah. now they're fixed. Well, I thought at the time, too, um, at the time too, I thought the map creator said that he had it fixed. It just needed to be updated in matchmaking. I thought I remember hearing that. So it might have just been because there yeah, hasn't been a current maps update yet, but yet it hasn't gone through. Fine-tuned but, yeah. and updated. So hopefully next update we see both updated maps and more new maps and a new game time. Yep, the new game type. Is, it, the new game type is what I'm most excited for by far. Yeah. But yeah, so it's it's basically going to be the uh, it's a five round uh, GGL game type if I remember correctly. Or are they still doing? Yeah. Uh, are still doing? Points. Is it still nine round? Is it still first to five? No, it's first to it's first three, three points wins okay. with a round based game type. Yeah, I wasn't sure because the uh, score fest is first to five, so it's like. A... Yeah. There, yeah. I mean, you can easily switch it to nine round if you needed to. Or say league play, but right. Um, we already have our league settings anyway, so it's yeah. no big. But basically, all your settings are going to be exactly the same as in league play. So, uh, are we keeping Except in? We're keeping in ground pound, still ground right? Yeah, match yeah. That's the one yeah. thing that three four three wanted us to keep in. Was that? But which... you can punch over and over without dying. There's no Spartan charge, no shields, yep. that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, shield Spartan charge are the big ones. And then uh, I think, uh, and then the camera damage is tweaked a little bit. I think the radar distance is modified as well to make it so that that inner circle is more accurate, if I remember correctly. I think that's what Digi did for his game type, but I'm not 100% sure. I thought it was expanded a little bit, but maybe not. I might just be misremembering. Yeah. But yeah, the loss of shields is a big thing. It makes taking a little bit more consistent, and as a runner, you're not going to get mutual. So that's yeah. going to be a lot of, uh, for, especially and for people who play the league player. somebody, already. they die. Yeah, it's gonna be, it'll be much better practice for league as well. Because right now the game types are so different. Like, uh, I find myself when I do a lot of tanking in matchmaking that I have a little bit harder time adjusting to league play. Like if I do that immediately after, just because yeah. the range is so shortened. Like in matchmaking, I feel like the way you have to tank is, if I mean if they mess up and step directly into your kill radius, you kill them obviously. But your kill radius is a lot shorter than normal. But your, your normal kill radius from league play is like a damage radius in matchmaking. It will it will flare their shields, and basically you just have to dance with them and constantly get their shields down. Because if their shields are popped, you can kill your kill radius is the same as in yeah. league play. So that's more or less what it comes no down shield. to. The problem is you have no way to know whose players are popped or whatnot. So if you're rushing at a new player, if you don't know if he's taking damage, you don't know what your kill radius is anymore. Yeah, and it's just right. So you like you kind of have to assume a. Uh, Worst case, and you have to just try to flare shields again. So it's yeah. it's it's a um, it's it's a little inconsistent. And it's hard to kind of accurately plan out how you're gonna. It's it's hard to strategize when you're tanking, because you don't know how the damage is working across the board. In the case of league play, it's the same for everybody. So you know that if you swing yep. at a certain if you swing in there within a certain radius of you, you will kill them unless network shenanigans happens. And their health comes back almost immediately if you like. 
get to right, hit you, marker, but you don't kill him, the health right. comes back immediately. So it's you know that this health rate is going to be the same right. every if, time you swing. If you, if you get your health hit, if, if you're outside of somebody else's kill radius and you just take damage, you're not going to be at a you're not going to have your range suddenly be at a disadvantage to them mm -hmm. because of damage. You're right. It's 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 more consistent and it's. It'll lead to better tank battles, I believe, because you're going to have with the, with the players who know what they're doing. They're they they have a better idea of how to switch. They have like have a better idea of their range. You can pl you can basically yep. plan out your strategies a little bit better. So that's going to be interesting. And Spartan Charge obviously is also a huge thing to get rid of because it is yeah awful. That was connection based and it was unreliable it, sometimes. And I wouldn't even call it the tank could get hit based necessarily. It's and, just more so. If you knew if you were if your timing was right and you had the sword in it, you could just consistently mutual yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen people who spark charge as they're fun. like right before they die and they'll still get the mutual. It's the sort yeah. of thing where it's like it yeah, that's And part of that's connection based depending on the server anyway, so Right. That's why like, But it just makes things it makes things way too easy. It, to like it, anybody yeah. can basically mutual anybody at any time. There is. And it's something that everybody spams, and no one wants a spammed move. I've, in I've seen less people spamming it, actually, in uh, matchmaking lately. I don't know if the people who are spamming it have gotten bored and left, or what not, or what exactly what's going on with it, but I've not seen it happen very yeah. often. But yeah, so uh, we've got those happening. New maps coming yeah. in, which is going to be awesome, but the game type is by far the... that's by far the big deal. And Knockyard has posted his video of what we did on Saturday as well. Yep, I believe, I I believe that was streamed on his channel, so that would be under his there. past broadcast as well. Uh, let me see. It should be. It's uh, Twitch Saves yeah. past broadcast for a set amount of time. Or did he do it on Twitch? Okay. I thought so, because I know, uh, I know uh, we, we hosted his channel for that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's on his YouTube channel, I know for sure. With timestamps and everything. Yep. But yeah, uh, not good. Yeah. So his YouTube channel has it, and I mean, his Twitch by default will save past broadcasts for a set amount of time, so it'll be on there as well, at least for the next couple of days. It depends on whether you're partnered or not, how long it sticks around, but yeah, it should be there for at least for the next week or so. I don't. I they keep changing the time frame for what how long they last in past broadcasts, so I don't know for <laughs> sure how long it'll be there, but it will be there. Mm -hmm for a brief amount of time. So yeah, so they had that map testing going on yesterday, plus Warzone weekend. Over this next week, we're going to... Uh, there's not going to be much happening again. We're going to probably gonna be doing uh, Warzone again, I imagine. Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe we'll get some... Maybe we'll see if we can get scrims set up for, with uh, some of the GGL teams. This week is mostly going to be... Uh, it's going to be the uh, Veteran Division schedule being drafted up. And uh, depending on how many teams we have signed up, if we need ambassadors, we're going to go through and figure that and uh, get those figured out this week as well. And then I believe uh, we will be announcing achievables this week as well, if I remember correctly. I'd have to double okay. check with Ali and Rage on that. But achievables will be back. Uh, for those who uh, have not played in the GGL before, it's sort of like uh, it's like achievements on Xbox of sorts. You pull off accomplishments in a game, in a league game, and you will get uh, you will get a certain amount of of grift points as well how they're for calm and if you have uh, more than a certain number of grift points at the end of the season i think 750 is our number for the season because that's what it normally is you will you will get a hmm. seed in playoffs and the way obviously well we're going to talk about this a little bit more closer to playoffs but i think right now the plan is for playoff seeding it's going to be top seeds are your veteran divisions your veteran division teams based on their record and then you would have your classic team, uh, your classic teams based on record, and then your achievable teams based on record. Right. So basically, if you make it in on of achievables, you're going to be a lower seed than if you made it in from uh, your win percentage. But yeah, we'll we'll look at that closer there. But the idea is to try to make those play out the playoffs a little bit more a little bit fair for uh, teams across the board, so that you don't have like your veteran division teams playing each other in the early rounds. Yep, and uh, yep. Ugly, you just uh, Ugly just posted a link to uh, the uh, matchmaking test event in Twitch chat. So yep. if you are watching live, that is there for you if you wanted to check that out. And it should show up in past broadcast video as well. Yep. So what else do we have going on at this point? I mean, GGL News, again, that's starting to ramp up here as uh, sign-offs are coming to a close. So 
Again, you're going to see a lot more information over this next week regarding that. Division times and whatnot. Yep. Games will start the the week of the 10th, so a week from tomorrow. I mean, for those of us watching live, it's a week from tomorrow. I don't know when this gets put on the hub site, so it might not be a week yeah, from tomorrow at that second. point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, those games are going to start there. It's a six-week regular season. If you're in a classic division, you have five weeks, and then you have a makeup week. If you're in the veteran division, you're playing all six weeks, and you have more games per week. Uh, that's all pretty normal. None of that's yep. changed too much. Free scheduling, uh, you can freely reschedule in both uh, in both divisions. So if you can't make a game, that's fine. We're flexible. Just work something out with the other mm-hmm. captain. If you do have to reschedule with another captain, please, 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 uh, if there, please save any messages regarding it just in case a dispute rises up. That way we have information to act on as opposed to just having a situation where it's like he said, she said. We're just like, oh, well, we agreed right. to reschedule our game to this time, and then the game isn't played at that time, and that captain says, oh, we didn't agree to reschedule. We were supposed to play it the first time, and they never showed up. It's like, all right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if, you, if you do reschedule, save that mess, save those messages, please. It makes our job a lot easier if uh, disputes arise, and it helps the situation get resolved faster and more amicably for everybody. So it yeah. is in your best interest to do that. So yeah, the, I think that's about it for GGL right yeah. now. Again, we're just uh, waiting for games to start on the 10th at this point as signups come to a close. The Pro Tour, I know a lot of people are asking about that in chat. They want a lot more information on that, and we are pretty close to that. I would like to run a town hall later this month. It's At this point, there's a couple things I'm waiting, for, waiting on. I've mentioned this in the past, but I want the leadership team to be figured out so that way they can join me for the town hall. And we'll, when we go through and discuss all of that. And I also would like to... Uh, and right now, uh, to DJ, obviously, he's over at TwitchCon talking with sponsors to see uh, about potential deals, trying to get stuff set up. If we've got information about that that I can announce along with the Pro Tour, that would be awesome to be able to announce the the prize pool for it. But again, that's uh, I don't want to delay the announcement of that too long, waiting for that, because sometimes mm-hmm. these negotiations can take some time. So the, this yeah. month is my goal to have that town hall sort of thing. We'll talk a lot about we'll we'll talk a lot about the uh, time for that once it's uh, figured out, but. Yeah, uh, I've, I've talked to DJ about that, so he's most, most likely we're going to have DJ get on. He will kind of moderate the discussion. Anybody can submit questions to the town hall in advance of the event, and he will ask the, uh, he will bring those to us as in the leadership. Uh, we will answer those live on a Twitch stream for that. And obviously, uh, that will be uh, saved and recorded for anybody who isn't able to watch it live but still wants to learn more about the format. So we'll have that pop out, and there is a rules handbook that is being finalized that's mostly uh that's mostly nailed down at this point so that will hopefully get announced around then as well and okay. uh, as i mentioned in the past we were aiming for a start of the at the beginning of next year so right now i think the first qualifiers for pro league uh that we have on our tentative schedule for the pro tour is the first one is on the second and the third the qualifiers are are all potentially two-day events because they are longer round Swiss tournaments, but it all depends on the number of teams we have signed up. It might make more sense to just have it on one mm-hmm. day if we have fewer teams, but I think that we might see higher sign-up numbers for that because you have those smaller roster sizes, and there is a lot at stake with them. So we'll yeah. see. It's the sort of thing where it could... Because um, be, this basically with our first season, there's going to be four qualifiers. Each qualifier will get two teams into the professional league since there's a total of eight slots available for that, and it'll be a Swiss round, so the top two teams from each Swiss qualifier makes it in. And it's the sort of thing where it's like, um, for the fourth qualifier, if you didn't make it in any of the other qualifiers, this is your last chance. So I think you would see higher numbers for that, because if you had like teams that couldn't make a certain qualifier before, this is like the, this is like their last chance to get in. So you're going to see all the teams that want to get in and haven't gotten in already, That's they're all probably going to try to participate in that. Well, with the first three, you might see you might see some teams not sign up based on availability and whatnot. And at the same time, too, as you go later on in the qualifiers, the teams that already make it in, obviously they have no reason to play, so they won't be playing in those. And I don't even think that they, mm-hmm. they wouldn't even be eligible for those because there'd be no point in them competing in it. So, yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure how the numbers for that are going to end up shaking out. I could, see, I could see them increasing as it goes on and teams get more desperate. I could see it decreasing as teams get into the pro league and don't need to play so we'll see how that works out but yeah so i think we could those are going to be some interesting events i think and uh, again the second is january 2nd uh, 2017 that is when the first one of those is planned to start right now so that is uh right. yeah that's what i'm expecting at the moment 
But yeah, I don't think there's that much else going on currently. Again, uh, TwitchCon obviously happening. That's mm-hmm. why DJ isn't here. So he is doing some great work over there. And from yeah. what I hear, that that's just uh, that's just been a ton of fun for everyone involved. He's been posting a lot on Twitter, yep. and uh, he looks like he's having a great time. So yep, good for him. Yep. Yeah, I know he was talking about there was like a VIP party last night. I think that he was talking about, which uh, I'm a little bit jealous about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, obviously he's down there with a whole bunch of other Griff Ballers right now. So, him, uh, Rage More Nerd, they're both down there. Pop Tart, I believe, is there. Pro Ace Joker. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Who, I don't know which other Griff Ballers are there off the top of my head, but yeah, yeah. I think I think he's. I think a lot of uh, West Coast Griff Ballers are probably over there. If mm-hmm. I had to guess, because that is obviously over in San Diego. But yeah, no, it sounds like it's been a great event for him. So uh, we're excited to see him come back and be able to talk about that. Uh, talk about that for everyone next week. Mm-hmm. And then, other than that, uh, next week we'll have more to say about stuff like that. Anyway. Yep. Yep. And obviously, at that GGL point, we'll know up. more. Yep, we'll know more about GGL yeah. by that point. It's going to be the day before GGL starts for the next hubcast, so we'll be able to talk about the divisions, uh, veteran, veteran, veteran schedules, and whatnot. Achievables, mm-hmm. uh, ambassadors, if uh, those are a thing. Our registration numbers are a little bit lower than I was expecting, but I think part of that is we had a little bit less time to announce this than we normally do. I think normally there's like a two-week break between mm-hmm. when signups are announced and when they actually open. Also, usually we see a big rush towards on the last day, so that might uh, those numbers might still increase from where they're at right now. But and then also, I think we haven't had quite as big of a uh, advertising push as we've had for some seasons in the past. Partly because right now we have kind of a new leadership team doing this, and we're trying to figure everything yeah. out. But like I think in the past, like we've had, I remember in the past we've had uh, people from leadership just basically go through and send like an Xbox Live message to every single player who's ever played in a Griff Ball League. And that's, <laughs> uh, but uh, we didn't have time to get that set put together this week, uh, this season, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, we definitely are going to have enough team. We definitely, uh, from what I we have enough teams to make, have some uh, very competitive divisions, I think, and some very interesting games. So it's going to be an interesting season. Cool. Yeah. I think that's everything I have uh, for this week. Googie, is there anything else? On your end, that you uh, mm. you want to bring up? No, pretty much. The only thing I had was the map testing on Saturday. I participated in. Yep. And then yep. GGL is starting up soon. We covered that. I think that's about it. But I'll have. Yep. Yeah. So again, uh, if uh, I mentioned this at the beginning, but if you are watching and you, uh, if you're watching live and you want to play in the GGL, today is the last day to do that. They will close at 11:59 uh, p.m. Eastern tonight. So get, if you have not registered for that, get your team uh, registered uh, as soon as possible, just sometime tonight before then, preferably. And again, there is yeah. a front page post on uh, Griff Ball Hub where that, that will have all the instructions for doing that if you're a new team. If you right. have any issues with registration, again, uh, feel free to reach out to myself, Rage, or Allie, and we can get things figured out. Obviously, Rage is at TwitchCon, so we might not be able to respond right away, but uh, I'll be around most of the day, and I do have back-end access, so I can get stuff fixed if there's any issues. But yeah, sounds uh, good. So this coming week again, uh, feel free to join us on Wednesday and Thursday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern for our. I mean, I think we're just calling them War Zone Wednesdays. Uh, in, yeah, uh, until the new season starts up. Thor Zone Thursdays, I think, was what the name that we tried <laughs> to use, which I still think is a terrible name. Yeah, but it's yeah. terrible. But yeah, uh, we might we might see if we can get scrims together, but uh, we can't guarantee that at this point. But regardless, of here, there'll be a bunch of it'll be a lot of fun. We'll. If you're watching, you'll probably have a chance to get in and play with us if you want. So that's a lot of fun. Feel free to check out and uh, watch mm-hmm. that. And then obviously on Saturday, our normal Warzone weekend stream at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. And of course, the Hubcast again next week uh, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, which I mistakenly yep. advertised at 1 p.m. Eastern yesterday because I keep getting... <laughs> it's 1 p.m. I'm at Central Time, so it's 1 p.m. for Central me. Central Time, yeah. And I keep getting it confused. Actually, I think at one point it was 1 p.m. Eastern, and then I thought it was 1 p.m. Central woke up late for that and we all decided that since <laughs> it was early that we just wanted to do it then anyways because i'm pretty sure i remember that happening anyway. at some point we're like yeah in slack mm-hmm. you were sending a message it's like sonic where are you and it was like it was like at like new like 1205 my time so it had been five minutes late for the yeah. time that we were set and i was like oh i thought it was one central oops and then we just kind of stuck at that time to both of us. yeah we kind of <laughs> stuck at that time because nobody none of us wanted to wake up early because like for dj obviously west coast time the old hubcast right. time of 11 a.m. That's 8 a.m. West Coast. That, that was not. They weren't fans of that. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks everyone for uh, tuning into the hubcast again. I am mm-hmm. uh, Sonic Machos. Joining me was Ugi. And I'm um, 
Oogly, yeah. Okay. And, uh, be sure to follow us on griffballhub.com and at Oogly, and at griffballhub on Twitter to keep up with what's going on. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone, or listening, depending on uh, when you're watching this. But yeah, I just okay. I'm gonna end this now before I say anything else dumb. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Morning. Bye. Oh yeah. Thank you for listening to the Griffball Hubcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Griffball Hub for all the latest in Griffball news and entertainment.